Now, you're best known as the owner of the Buffalo Sabres hockey franchise. Other than a successful career as a high school baseball player, you really didn't have much involvement in sports and certainly no previous business involvement in professional sports. How was it that you got involved with the Sabres? That's an interesting story, Vic, and you're right. I had no idea, no interest in owning a professional sports team. People had contacted me in the past, and I just sort of said, no, I'm not interested. But one day, Steve Pigeon contacted me and said, Tom, we have a team in Buffalo, the Buffalo Sabres hockey team. I, by the way, I had seen three of their games in my entire life. It said they're in really desperate straits. And I said, well, what? I mean, so? He said, well, you have to understand the, the fans in Buffalo are very ardent hockey fans and football fans. Uh, the city's got a huge investment in the arena, over $125 million, and all that would be closed down if this team is left to move. I said, well, aren't there any other candidates in the community that would be interested in buying? He said, there's one, but his financial resources are in question, and none of the other key players like Warren Buffett, the owner of the Buffalo News, he certainly isn't stepping up to the plate. And uh, so I said, all right, uh, let me go look at the arena. And I went over and looked at the arena. And, started a conversation with the league commissioner. He started talk, talking to me about the salary cap and revenue sharing and how that was going to help the small market teams. And uh, the Sabres had had a history of filling the arena. And, it, you know, they just needed a, a team that could play and had financial stability and so forth. So I decided that I would make an offer. We made the deal. I'm very happy we made the deal. It's been, I think, great for the city of Buffalo. It couldn't have happened without Larry Quinn and Dan DePofi. Carl Palladino in, introduced me to Larry. and I. Obviously, I found him to be a quality guy, and he had a lot of experience. He brought in Dan, and the rest is history. I mean, uh, the team has done extremely well, con considering where it came from. Disappointed we didn't make it to the playoffs the last two years. We missed by two games and one game, respectively. Financially, the team is solid. We took a financial hit the first two years. The first year we played, the second year because of the lockout. But after that, the thing has got, had a positive bottom line, and it looks like it has the ability and capability to sustain itself, which I think is very important to the city of Buffalo. Taking us back to when you assumed control of the team, what was the media reaction to your purchasing the Sabres? That was very interesting and very surprising to me. Uh, as I was uh, negotiating with the league, and of course the media was v involved sort of intimately, uh, they sort of did a number on me. I remember reading an editorial headline in the Buffalo News, Tom, stay in Rochester, we don't want you here. I mean, and there were several of them. It seemed like there was something on the editorial page almost every other day about this. I thought it was kind of unique. I, I didn't think the people knew me very well, didn't know much about my background or my history or anything like that. But maybe it was just a strong indication they wanted somebody local to buy it and not somebody from out of town. I never considered myself that much of an out-of-towner, being 60 miles down the thruway. But in any event, they were pretty harsh on me. But uh, we did it, and uh, it was sort of a uh, love affair for the first you know, two or three years. And then uh, when we didn't win the cup and then we didn't make the playoffs, you know, they started, the Buffalo News hammers us uh, quite regularly. Uh, some even indicated we couldn't run a 7-Eleven store. And I said, I'm not sure anybody at the Buffalo News could, but... <laughs> that as it may be. Salary caps are, are common in professional sports leagues, but explain how the salary cap works in the NHL and what it means for the Sabres. Well, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about the salary cap in hockey. As it pertains to the Buffalo Sabres and the rest of the teams, there is a dollar amount that no team can go over under any circumstances. Uh, it's approximately 56 or 54 million dollars today. And a team under no circumstances cannot spend more than that. I think what's confusing, the other pro leagues, for example, baseball, you can go over the salary cap as long as you pay a luxury tax. I mean, that's how the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox get their payrolls up to $150 million, by paying a luxury tax. The luxury tax is kind of small compared to uh, uh, what they're paying their salaries in total. But in hockey, you can't do that. So if you're at say the cap's at $56 million, if you're at $54 million and you see a player out there that you want and it's going to cost you 4 or 6 or $7 million, you can't take them on unless you're willing to give up other players. And that's why there was a lot of confusion about uh, Danny Bruer and Chris Drury and uh, even Brian Campbell. We weren't in a position to keep any of those players unless we were willing to give up some of our great future stars like Thomas Vanek and Ryan Miller and so forth. Since making the Sabres profitable, there have been rumors of other people interested in purchasing the team from you. Uh, has that ever been the case? Well, occasionally we get 
what I will call nibbles, Vic. Uh, you know, people that show some level of interest uh, when they start realizing the financial side and what it takes to buy a team and so forth, that, that pushes a lot of people away. But we did get one interesting offer, and I think it, I think people would be interested in hearing about this offer. I can't, I'm not going to mention the name, but we had an individual that offered a fairly reasonable amount for the team. Fairly reasonable, something that we probably would have considered or maybe countered, okay? But they had an extra clause in their purchase offer, and that was if we help them move the team to another city, they will pay us an additional $100 million, which, wow. you know, which it, it took us a few minutes to say, is he serious? We sat down at the table, Larry, Dan, and I. Larry and Dan are minority shareholders now. And we said, we have to take a look at this. We talked about it for about 30 seconds, and we all three of us agreed, we can't consider this. We're not allowing this team to move out of Buffalo. That's it.